the session on uh, sperm in minus 196 uh, degrees centigrade. Is it as simple as it sounds? Uh, in association with IHERA, uh, as we all know, the yes, International sir. Human Biology Research Committee Academy, yeah, along with the Hello. Hello. I think there is problem with. It's an immense pleasure to introduce our coordinators today, uh, Dr. Nidhi Singh, uh, Madam, uh, Yoshita Tanwar, Madam, and Dr. Nancy Sharma, Madam. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, Dr. Nidhi Singh, Madam, uh, Madam did her uh, MBBS, MD, DNB, DC, MNAMS, uh, IMSA, and uh, Madam is the Senior Clinical Embryologist at Panacea Hospital, Varanasi. Uh, she is the Assistant Professor at PIIRE, Panacea Institute of Interdisciplinary Research and Educational Academy, Varanasi. And she has a teaching experience of more than 16 years and multiple national and international publications. <laughs> and Madam is a team member of uh, IHERA and a member of various uh, national and international societies uh, like HRA, ACE, uh, uh, MNAMS, IMSA and uh, many more. Uh, and uh, in the field of interest, uh, Madam has a uh, keen interest in the anthropology and uh, cryobiology. So now it's time to introduce uh, Ms. Yoshita Tanwar, Madam. Uh, Madam is a senior embryologist and uh, laboratory in church uh, with more than eight years of experience in the field of embryology in New Life uh, India Fertility Clinic, uh, private limited. And uh, she is the certified in advanced uh, skill set embryology training conducted by Mark Center of Excellence in Clinical Embryology, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. She is the ASRM certified clinical embryologist, a member of ACE India and ASRM Society. And Madam is the team member of International Human Embryology Research Committee, that is IEA. And uh, now uh, it's time to introduce uh, Nancy Sharma, Madam. Uh, Madam is the Chief Embryologist and uh, Lab Manager, Department of Reproductive Medicine, IKDRC, IKS Hospital, a Civil Campus, and the Bath Gujarat. Uh, she is also a Samsara Certified Embryologist and uh, Embryo and Plastic Biopsy Training Workshop. Uh, she did from uh, Embryology and PGM. PGD Academy UCL, uh, embryology certification course from Indian Fertility Society. She has uh, experience of more than eight years in the field of ART. And uh, Madam presented many uh, research paper in many national and international uh, journal as a presenting author. And uh, she is a PhD scholar and postgraduate in molecular biology and biochemistry from Guru Nanak Dev uh, University. And uh, Madam is the team member of uh, IERA uh, involved in the Gamma Talat. And apart from that, Madam is the member of uh, prestigious many national and international societies like ASM, HSA, ASM, and IERA. So so with this short introduction, I uh, request uh, uh, Nancy Ma'am uh, to take over the session uh, for further uh, proceedings. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Suman. Uh, can we have the series, please? Mr. Suman, can we have the CVs, please? Yes, madam. Uh, CV is already there. No, I cannot see it. Is it visible to everyone else? Yeah, yeah. We can see it. it it's visible? Yeah, yes, yes, I'll, yes. I'll read it from my phone and reconnect after that. Mm -hmm. So today we we'll, uh, we I'll, I want to introduce to our co -con uh, our conveners. First, we have Dr. Ved Prakash, sir is laboratory director of South Infertility Center and in uh, an IBF in Delhi NCR. Sir is PhD and is the founder of Indian International Human Embryology Research Academy. He's past president of ACE and member of Virtual Education Committee, Society of for uh, study of reproduction, SSR, and faculty and fellowship. He did his faculty and his fellow, uh, fellowship in ART from MED uh, University. He's visiting faculty, MSc in ART, uh, Mysore University. He did eight chapter contributions in textbook and published papers and is being recorded. In vitro fertilization, now I can see it. In vitro fertilization of two blastocyst formation. Then we have our 
Okay. Then we have Dr. Sanjay Shukla, sir is Laboratory di Director of Bethi Hospital Jaipur and Shivani IVF and Fertility Center Jaipur. Sir is currently the President of ACE and he did his PhD in Life Sciences, worked on an early days uh, in early diagnosis of typhoid fever and working in the field of human reproduction since 1998. Uh, 1998. Can we have the next CV please? Then Dr. Charudat Joshi. Sir is postgraduate in life sciences. He did his special trainings in IVF ICSI from Belgium and embryo freezing and embryo freezing from KK Women Hospital, Singapore. Sir is past president of ACE and past vice president of ACE. He's also the medical director of Genes uh, India ARD Bank. So for starting the first session of the evening, we have a very wonderful topic, which is effect of prior preservation on sperm. Uh, for moderating this session, we have Dr. Charudat Joshi, and uh, as a speaker, we are ha we are having Dr. Chandan. So, Charu sir, Charu sir. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Can I can I have Charu sir CV please? Yes. So, Charu sir, uh, as I already told, his PhD and uh, sir did his post graduation uh, in life sciences and his special uh, training of ICSI and IVF from Belgium and uh, embryo freezing from KK Hospital, Singapore. He'd done his special trainings in laser hatching from Belgium also, and he's post-doctorate in life science. Uh, he's executive committee member of MP ISAR chapter and executive committee member of MP IFS chapter also. He was past president of ACE and past, uh, past vice president of ACE and medical director of genes and India ARD uh, bank. Now over to Charu sir for the introduction of the speakers. Uh, thank you, Nancy, for uh, such nice introduction. And uh, without wasting further time, I would like to introduce my dear friend, Dr. Chandan. Uh, he is uh, presently scientific director for Akshaya Fertility Center and IKEA Emerology Training Center, visiting consultant at uh, Kangaroo Care Woman Hospital, uh, Masum Fertility, Ashwarya Fertility, Fetal Medicine Center, Mumbai, uh, Manohari Fertility, etc. as a consultant, embryologist and lab director. He has 13 years of experience in the field of embryology and visiting different hospitals in and around India. He has trained at various places, particularly in Christ University, Singapore, in National University Hospital. He is an MCOL certified registered embryologist by the American College of Embryology. And um, he is a director of Lanka Embryology Training Institute, Colombo, trained by Hamilton Thorne for embryo biopsy in Bangkok. Certified for embryo biopsy by Anderson Genetic Lab for Excellence in Biopsy Technique. He has many awards and certifications to his credit. So over to you, Chandan, for uh, uh, listening a nice and uh, uh, elaborate talk on the topic. Chandan? Hello. Hello. Is Dr. Chandan there? Uh, Hello. Sir, is my voice is audible? Yes, yes, yes. Now you are audible. You are audible. Sir, your voice is not audible. Actually, you have logged in from two devices. So, sir, simultaneously two devices will make it equal. Sir, you are not audible, Chandu. Sir, you are not audible, sir. It's not audible, sir. 
Hello, hello. I think I have some technical issues. Chandan, we can hear you now. Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah. I'm just logging from my mobile. I'm just trying to open the document. Just one minute. I have logged in from my mobile, but I'm not able to open my presentation. Or uh, I request uh, the second speaker to begin with so that I can finish off this technical error and log in for the second session. Yes, yes. We can okay, start. okay. And, uh, do one thing, yeah, okay. Chandan. You please share yeah. that uh, uh, presentation to me or maybe Sanke, someone else. So I'll, I'll, sh I'll share the PPT now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll yeah. do that. And in the meantime, RC can take over. No? Okay, okay, okay. We okay. can start with yeah. okay. okay, okay, okay. So due to some technical errors, uh, we, we are shifting our topics. We are, we are taking uh, first lecture that is media use in sperm freezing. For that lecture, I would like to introduce our moderator, Dr. Sanke Dumal. Sir is uh, MSE, MCE, ECE, EMPH, PhD, and uh, he's working as a senior clinical embryologist in Keshma IVF Fertility and Reproductive Medicine Center in Mangalore. He is MSE in Genetics and MSE in Clinical Embryology from University of Mysore. He's a consultant embryologist in multiple IVF centers. He's ASHRAE certified clinical embryologist, executive committee member of ACE, and scientific co committee member of IHERA. He is also an editorial board a member of um, journal JBRA, and uh, he's, he's also taking care of ACE newsletter and IHERA newsletter. He also work as a review, reviewer for journals like JBRA Reproduction, uh, JRHM, and OGS. He's principal investigators, investigators of several pro projects at Keshma Medical College. He's also a member of ACE, ISAR, ASHRAE, and IFS. Regular faculty in more than 50 various conferences, national and international both, and his area of interest are male infertility and cryobiology. So I would like uh, I would like to call Sanket sir for uh, the introduction of speaker. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Nancy, for that kind of introduction. So well, uh, I'll be introducing the next speaker, that is uh, uh, Arshia. So she is MCE and lab manager at uh, Nova. She has done a master's in, from Monash and uh, in the year 2019. And she's currently the lab manager at uh, Nova Jalandhar. And during her MSc, she has uh, uh, interned at various labs in and around Melbourne. And uh, uh, she holds a master's degree in molecular biology and human genetics from Manipal University. And uh, while studying at Manipal, she did a six month project at uh, uh, TFR, Bangalore. And she has been active member of SIRT, uh, Melbourne Association of Embryologists, and also recently the same was seen for the age 2022. She presented a poster on universal warming solution, which got her the first prize. So without much further delay, I would like to hand over the session to Arshia. So she will be talking on the uh, media that is required for the uh, sperm crack preservation. Arshia, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I'm just sharing my slides one second. Are my slides visible now? Yes. Good yes. evening. So the topic for discussion today is sperm freezing media. 
So what is basically sperm cry cryopreservation? It is a procedure to preserve sperm cells, commonly called sperm banking. Cryopreservation is the freezing of cells or tissues to a sub-zero temperature, typically minus 196, which is the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. The first successful cryopreservation of spermatozoa was initiated over 50 years ago. For human sperm, the longest reported successful storage is 22 years. The freezing of sperm needs cryopreservation agents that minimize the damage to the cells during the freezing and the thawing process. How it all began? Over eight decades ago, in 1938, Lewitt and Hodap performed the first vitrification of frog, frog sperm in liquid air. Paul J. et al. from London claimed that a revival of spermatozoa that successfully froze sperm uh, samples from various species with glycerol. The first attempt using vitrified sperm from human life birth was reported in 1953 by two researchers from State University of Iowa using sperm frozen on dry ice. And soon after the publication, normal life birth was declared. About one decade later, the same group tried freezing with liquid nitrogen and succeeded. Live births from the frozen sperm after four decades storage in liquid nitrogen had also been reported. The first successful cryopreservation of human spermatozoa that achieved pregnancies and life worth was reported by Sherman and Bunge in 1953, interestingly, by using liquid nitrogen for cold storage. Adding to the above, frozen thought spermatozoa achieved pregnancies in vitro, in IVF in 1984, in IUI in 1990, and in subzonal insemination in 1992, and ICSI in 1994. So when we begin to cryopreserve, the first effect is seen on the head where the acrosomal reaction takes place and where the chromatin and the DNA is affected which is followed by the mitochondria in the midpiece and subsequently the tail. In case of any cryostress or cryo injury, the plasma membrane undergoes apoptosis or cell damage. So how is sperm uh, cryopreservation performed? Conventional freezing, slow freezing techniques are still widely used at ART clinics all over the world, but vitrification has become more effective for cryopreserving human spermatozoa after the efforts in the past decades. Vitrification by directly plunging the sperm samples into liquid nitrogen is a fast, simple, and a cost-effective method to cryopreserve human sperms. This method of rapid freezing causes no damage from intracellular ice crystallization during cooling resulted, resulting in better motility and recovery and better recovery with a higher mitochondrial activity. How sperm cryopreservation is performed? The preservation is done using cryoprotective agents, which are low molecular weight chemicals that serve to protect sperm from freezing damage or ice crystallization by decreasing the freezing point of materials. CPS can be toxic if used at a higher concentration. There, there are of two types, permeating CPS and non-permeating CPS. Permeating uh, include DMSO, prop propylene glycerol and glycerol, which penetrate the cell membrane basically, and they stabilize the cell plasma membrane protein and reduce the concentration of electrolytes. The non-permeating CPAs are uh, sucrose, glycine, egg yolk citrate, which are unable to penetrate the plasma membrane. They minimize the intracellular crystallization by increasing the viscosity of the sample. Components of a cryoprotectant, they include a, ba a, a basic buffer and uh, some additives. The basic buffer includes dilution and culture media. Dilution has a phosphate buffer, trist test buffer, citrate buffer, and the culture media has human uh, tubal fluid, human follicular fluid. Coming to the additives, during cryopreservation, the sperm cells might be subjected to rapid ATP depletion. Thus, they require uh, glucose and fructose as replacements. The protein is an essential uh, constituent which helps in osmolarity stabilization and maintain membrane integrity. Antibiotics are also required to prevent semen from microorganism uh, contamination. 
coming to uh, membrane protectant egg yolk is uh, the inspiration of the inspiration of using the egg yolk is very simple as it occurs naturally and should be tested first currently the egg yolk is believed to predominantly act as a sperm cell membrane protectant antioxidants help to mitigate the oxidative stress caused during sperm freezing or small protectants uh, such as enzymatic inhibitors edta amino acids uh, are added to correct the abnormal semen osmolarity which is caused which is usually increased or compromised post ejaculate other molecules function mainly by increasing the concentration of cyclic amps promoting sperm energy metabolism thus improving motility parameters low doses of ozone was found to induce a positive response in the kinetic patterns and sperm structure since the discovery of glycerol it remained the cryoprotectant of choice for a cryopreservation despite known toxic effect on spermatozoa so to improve the cryo cryo survival rate more complex dilutions were added as glycine zwitterine citrate and egg yolk buffer where earlier glycerol egg yolk citrate showed most promising results in terms of motility during the 1980 the two other complex cryoprotectants were added human serum uh, human serum preservation medium hspm and zwitterine zwitter buffer egg yolk along with glycerol may reduce the adverse effect on the cell membrane during sperm cooling phase this suggests that a uh, glycerol egg yolk citrate medium is effective and has potential to be used in clinical practice a drawback of egg yolk is of is that it is of animal origin and has potential of toxins or microbial contamination to the lab thus other researchers have substituted egg yolk with lecithin or to eliminate the health health risk a uh, small so comparison between uh, yolk free and egg yolk media when comparing between two cryoprotectants the use of glycerol egg yolk uh, citrate gives a higher pa uh, percentage of post thawed normal sperm morphology which was compared to the sperm freezing media which can also be uh, called yolk free media as the only fda approved commercial reagent for non freezing storage of human spermatozoa a uh, test yolk buffer has been applied in pre in the pre uh, incubation of spermatozoa over the last 30 years and has proven to favor iui and ivf outcomes however test yolk buffer was mostly used because of its ability to enhance the sperm penetration rate but not to extend lifespan in vitro hence spermatozoa are usually incubated in test yolk buffer for a short period within 2 hours and subsequently washed for iui or ivf the test tube buffer may be superior to other types of culture media such as bww notably there are a few studies that report the fertilization outcome of sperm maintained in extenders for a longer time which shows promise for more clinical applications paulson et al demonstrated that compared with the standard swim up method the refrigeration of sperm in a test tube buffer for 24 hours following density gradient method these are certain papers which have shown that the use of egg yolk media has enhanced and improved the iui icsi and ivf outcomes some insights into the future potential components which could be used into sperm freezing media can be plasma rich growth factor haptourine and insulin plasma rich growth factor is extracted by simple centrifugation of fresh venous blood and adding anticoagulant and calcium chloride to it uh it plays a role it is it has uh, it was found that uh, a growth factor has a receptor on sperm cells and has a significant positive correlation between sperm count and motility haptourine was naturally is naturally present at both male and female reproductive tissue and this acts as an antioxidant anticapacitant and osmolegulatory actions insulin is produced by beta cells of pancreatic uh, of the pancreas a positive impact of insulin and insulin like growth factors have been demonstrated in development and function of leydig cells 
Uh, in this paper, the effect of plasma-rich growth factor uh, could be seen. Three different concentrations of PRGF has been used, 1%, 5%, and 10%, where we conclude that 1% has given us the best motility with more progressive motility and a, a increased vi viability of sperm cells. Effect of hap haptourine on sperm uh, cryopreservation uh, supplementation is has been proved by this paper where we see wherever the supplement haptourine supplementation was given the vitality has increased increased the motility was had a good hike and even the pro, uh, progressive motility has risen for the sperm cells effect of insulin on uh, sperm cryopreservation um, so in by in this paper and by this graph we can conclude that with the uh, increasing insulin concentrations, the progressive motility of the sperms was also on the rise. Thank you. And... These are my references. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ashya, uh, for that uh, wonderful presentation. So I don't see uh, any questions as of now. So we'll take one quick question from my end and we'll move to uh, the next uh, lecture. So uh, have you seen any uh, changes with respect to media? Say like uh, if you're using uh, different cryopreservation medias and uh, is there any differential expression of them with respect to motility yeah, or DNA fragmentation or, or any other survival rates also? Uh, to be honest, we have just uh, used two medias uh, and we have experimented in those two medias. And uh, on the lab level, we haven't seen any significant differences between the two medias. Okay. With, the, with respect to uh, only the motility part or even the... Even the survival. Even the survival. More hmm. or less, it's the same. Survival, motility, morphology. What about DNA fragmentation? DNA fragmentation did not come into play. Like we did not even, uh, I don't think so. There was any uh, effect on the integrity of the sperm. Okay. So uh, I can see one question here. Uh, Karsi sir wants to know crop reductants in vitrification. Sorry? He wants to know about crop reductants in vitrification. Sperm vitrification, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the talk is all about sperm, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're using glycerol, glycine. Mm -hmm. I do have one question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Uh, it is with, regarding the practice of any infertility selection, especially those who are performing IUIUC. So they are sold the uh, frozen sample by the uh, so called KRT banks, saying that these are IUI ready and you do not need any further preparations or processing. So, do you think those sperms which are frozen can be used just by thawing and instilling in the uterus? Oh, that's a really nice question, sir. So, actually, the semen samples that we are getting from the sperm bank, uh, so we uh, look into the sample and we are not since we are not noticing much debris and then we also see a good survival rate, we see a good motility. So those are the indications which tell us that we could directly go ahead uh, with the IUI before, like without, uh, was that the question? Yeah, uh, no, uh, that's the question, but... Uh, it's, it's a part, part, I, part answer. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, don't, don't you think there is a possibility of an, an Yes. Yeah. I'm really sorry to interrupt in between. Can I add something into that? 
Yes, please. Uh, sir, it's basically the procedure as well that we are using for uh, freezing sperms, basically. Uh, apparently, we are not using the normal protocol that we do for slow freezing, which is adding half, one is to one ratio of cryoprotected and sperm into it. It's the ultra rapid procedure, which involves a very uh, little amount of uh, cryoprotecting into okay. sperm. The... Sorry. Yeah, but uh, this is just one uh, isolated. Yes, sir. I, I, yes, sir. I was trying to read about it. But then this is uh, now very widely used. Even in Australia, we're getting sperms from US. And the protocol for them is like you just uh, thaw the sperm and it's ready to use. So there you're following the same protocol. No, no, that I agree. No, no. Uh, my, yeah. my, my concern is something different because not all the sperm banks are using the same protocol or using. Uh, similar amount yes sir it's because they are not using that much of uh, media to preserve sperm now right still still the theoretical no. uh, yes sir theoretical possibility of anaphylaxis yeah. exists yes and yes, even sir. if if a single case occurs that may lend you in trouble a serious trouble yes sir yes sir so i my question i mean the extension of my previous question is thawing and processing just simple washing is so detrimental that uh, people try to avoid it so but uh, we are uh, we do uh, the post wash method like we remove the cryoprotecting all we are doing is we are giving simple wash and then uh, swim up method we are not doing density gradient for the samples which are coming from the bank. Perfect, because they are already yeah. processed. Yeah. So but we do sounds... undergo the proper wash method and then swim up method. Yeah, so that is yeah. what I wanted to know, whether yes. this practice should be advocated or not. Yeah. Always, uh, uh, just to extend uh, what uh, Shukla has said now. Uh, if, 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 with your kind permission, sir, yes, if yes, I can inter yes. interfere. Yes, yes. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Please, Shukla sir. Here. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. See, uh, it is, the Shukla sir's question is perfectly okay. And it is very much uh, theoretically, if we look at it, even uh, our SOP also, NOVA's all SOP also says uh, to, uh, give a very mild wash, simple basic wash, and then use uh, irrespective of the procedure. And that is where uh, the uh, adverse effect of cryoprotectant like Grisror. Of course, the very much, very least amount of uh, cryoprotectant is there, but there is a possibility of some adverse effect, and probably uh, one must avoid using directly. I, I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. Right, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, why Shukla sir brought this question is, you no know, for the juniors, for the beginners, see, don't just try to like, thaw and di directly load and give it to the clinicians. Always wash it once, remove the cryoprotectants. Then, if you're, depending on the procedure, if you're going for IUI or IVF or ICSI, whatever it is, do swim up and then go, go ahead. Directly, just don't thaw it and uh, hand it over to the uh, no, for insemination or for injection, whatever it is. So, it's having said that, uh, actually, always because all the juniors or maybe from bank, you are getting message. Ki you just directly you can use this, but just don't do this. Yes, sir. You just mm. first wash it, then use it. Right. So uh, that is the message. So, having said that, uh, there are some more questions, but already we are late. So, uh, I would like to hand over the session to the coordinator. Thank you. So after this very wonderful and informative uh, discussion on the topic, we are moving towards the next topic, which is. And see, Dr. Chandan is ready now, so we can yeah. take the. Uh, is, okay, is my okay, voice yes, is audible yes, now? Yes, 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 yes Dr. Can Chandan, you can hear ah, me, please. Great. Yes, Dr. Charu, doc, uh, now Chandan is uh, starting for his doctor. Okay, okay. So, uh, 
I think the biodata has already been uh, read there. So it's you go ahead, Chandan, with your yeah. presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me uh, for all the uh, esteemed faculties. Uh, sorry for the technical glitch. Uh, there was a lot of issues in the uh, things. So finally, the IT guy rectified it. So I'm without further delay, I'm starting uh, sharing my slide. Uh, hope my slide is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. Then. Now, uh, this session is, is all about uh, uh, how do we uh, handle the sperm or how do we cryopreserve it? What is the best technique to make sure that our ultimate aim is to make sure that we get a sperm without having any uh, genetical damage or the DNA damage to it. So this topic is about the sperm cryopreservation. What we're going to uh, uh, review is uh, first over, uh, over you the current technique which we use in our cryopreservation uh, procedure. Considering the fact uh, effect to result of uh, the cryopreservation, the uh, sperm cryo damage, what are the damage which occurs during the cryopreservation, how to optimize the semen uh, cryopreservation. Uh, interestingly, we have done a study uh, to how to optimize with the media which we are available to, irrespective of any media which we have in our market, but how we effectively cryopreserve the sperm. So I am going to tell you some certain examples which we have carried out in our uh, uh, lab. The sperm preparation prior to cryopreservation uh, is cryopreservation induces DNA damage, whether using fresh rather than a cryopreserved sperm has their same effect on the uh, ICSI outcome and what are the special and uh, future issues which we, which we are uh, going to face. Now, what is sperm cryopreservation as uh, we have heard from our previous uh, uh, speaker? Uh, we, uh, it is a procedure where we preserve the sperm cells, uh, commonly called a sperm banking. Again, there are various uh, reasons for sperm banking, whether it could be a, a husband may not be, it may not be available uh, during the procedures or they might be undergoing for some chemotherapy uh, procedures. So whatever the uh, things are there, like we, we, there are certain situations where we have to pre uh, preserve the semen uh, parameter, sperm uh, semen sample. Uh, in order to uh, utilize wisely with respect to any of the ART procedure, could be an IUA or an IV procedure. Uh, the first uh, successful cryopreservation of uh, spermatozoa was initiated almost like 50 years ago, uh, in that the first human sperm uh, was the longest reported cryopreservation was like 22 years so far. So what, what happens here is it, it becomes in a dormant stage where all the biological activity ceases. Uh, the sperm, when we when we use a cryopreservation, our aim is to make sure that we we of course there are certain DNA damage which occurs, which which everybody knows that when we freeze the uh, sperm to minus one ninety seven, of course there are some sperm damage damage which may occur. But how effectively we freeze is what our aim should be. Now, why uh, cryopreservation is performed? Uh, okay, when there is an a very limited number of uh, sperm or an abnormal semen parameter for cancer patient, patient uh, undergoing uh, testicular surgeries, patient who are, uh, suffer from degenerative illness like diabetes, sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, person in occupancy with significant of uh, high risk of uh, gonorotoxic uh, uh, environment, uh, again, vasectomy and sometimes very crucial surgery. Uh, so before all this procedure, they just as a backup, we uh, preserve the semen sample. Uh, how does how sperm cryopreservation is performed? Uh, there are again uh, multiple debates which is there, and there are different protocols which we have, different type of uh, media's, different steps are there. But basically, it is divided into a permeable mem uh, permeable. Uh, uh, a media and the non-permeable uh, media. Uh, apart from this, again, uh, if it comes to a, a debate, debatable topic like whether it is a slow freezing or a, or a rapid vitrification, uh, a rapid vitrification uh, is best. So again, that we're going to discuss in further. So in, in what happens in permeating uh, uh, media is it, it penetrates inside the plasma membrane. So now when, when we freeze the uh, sperm parameter, uh, sperm, so our semen sample, all the water, we know that the cells are made up of 90% of water. So when it freezes, it forms crystals. So when it, when the crystallization of the cells happen, then again, it damages the cells. So now what we need to do is we have to 
dehydrate the cell first, then the, then we allow the uh, cryoprotectin to go inside. So you can see such of the uh, permeating uh, uh, cryoprotectin, uh, dimethyl acetate, dimethyl uh, sulfoxidate, glycerol, glycolithine. There are a lot of combination uh, provided by different uh, uh, media company, but these are all the uh, penetrating uh, uh, permeable uh, uh, medias. And uh, when it come, coming to non-permeable, uh, you have an albumin, dextran, uh, egg yolk, citric, uh, hydroxy, ethyl. So there are many, uh, basically the sucrose derivatives which we have. So the advantage is here is it minimizes the intracellular crystallization by increasing viscosity of the sample. So you know this, uh, uh, the, the viscosity, when, the, when uh, vis the osmosis and the reverse osmosis, when the viscosity is very high, any effect on that particular uh, specimen or the object will be uh, lesser. Uh, what are the benefit of cryopreservation? One is to maintain the sperm viability. Uh, it improves the recovery of motile sperm by using uh, a, a specific buffer, which we call Zitudron buffer. And uh, it improves the sperm uh, membrane fluidity. Uh, again, when, when we talk about the fluidity, it's very important because the cell organelles, when it has to perform in an optimal level, the sperm fluidity is very much important. So that's why uh, so far in the previous uh, uh, lecture, we were, we were asked some of the questions where whether uh, initially like a post or without processing, will you give the sample for the IUI processing? So definitely, yes, it is not. You're not supposed to uh, give just like, see the, the, the basic, uh, uh, um, the, the uh, what do the vendor say is like when when you when you get a sample from a sperm bank what they say is to make the clinician or the person who does the IUI to make their work easier what they say is you know you just take the sample keep it for some time get it to room temperature and then use it but what really happens here is the all the receptors are blocked by the uh, cryoprotectin so you have to give it a wash so once you give it the wash you have to make sure the sperms are become active. So what is hap happening in the active is the fluidity of the sperm will be in optimal condition. When the fluidity is become optimal, all the cell organelles will become optimal in condition. Okay. So uh, so that for, for that fluidity is very important. Uh, and again, when when this are very optimal, obviously the sperm which has to in cross the mucosal area, cross the cervix, cross the uterus, and for, reaches the fundus. For this, the sperm should be in optimal condition. So now again, coming to slow freezing, uh, I don't know how many of you are following this thing, but some there are many misconceptions about slow freezing. And I have personally seen some people are freezing in a different way. I'll tell you an example how they how I have seen and how I have uh, practiced in my center. See, when you freeze the semen sample, obviously you take one is to one or one is to 1.5 ratio of the media and the semen volume. So you mix it. So when you mix it, I drop by drop or mix it properly, like whatever the techniques you are there, I'm, I'm not touching that. You might be best in that. But what comes the, what I've seen the error which happens uh, here is, and which can cause high DNA fragmentation is, once the sample is ready, once your mixing is done, whichever the way you like, what I've seen is they keep this sample in a refrigerator, which is six to seven, then goes to the freezer, then goes to the liquid nitrogen vapor, and finally it goes to the liquid nitrogen. So you have different intermediate step which is happening. See, uh, any cells, whether it might be an oocyte or a spot, it is just a cell. So we stop completely uh, slow vitrification procedure, which we followed like one degree rise in temperature for the embryo preservation, which is followed very long back. We have, uh, we have stopped using it. That is completely out of syllabus now. But that is also a cell where we know what is the effect of slow freezing for an embryo. Even here, the sperm is also a cell. This is almost like a slow freezing, like where you keep subject them and slowly increase in temperature. What happens is there is a lot of DNA damage. We personally studied uh, maybe almost 25 to 30 samples with a conventional way, how they do the freezing. And then uh, we what we have done is we take, we have, Mix the sample one is to one, one, one ml or 1.5 ml ratio of media. So after mixing it, we just hardly keep for five minutes in room temperature. Then 
the sam the entire vial directly goes into the liquid nitrogen it's like a rapid vitrification it's never called as slow freezing it's a rapid vitrification so when we have done the analysis of both the sample the one which uh, we freeze the sample directly into the liquid nitrogen has a very less dna damage and the other conventional way where they subject into three uh, state where we have found high dna fragmentation so this is one of the tips which you can follow and uh, you can just do your uh, homework in your particular lab do this method and check out which says has a high uh, DFI in it. Okay, so uh, I don't want to press on this thing. I think, yeah, do you know what are the uh, disposables which we use in the cryopreservation techniques? Okay, and again, uh, this is what I was uh, talking about. The labeling of the uh, vial which, is, uh, which you keep is also very important to make sure that uh, you take the sample without disturbing the other sample. You take the exact sample which you want. Um, Okay, so this is what I was uh, uh, talking about, the ultra rapid freezing, which we called a vitrification protocol for the sperm rather than freezing protocol. Uh, okay, there are guidelines which is given by ISHRI and the WHO, but all says that your uh, DNA fragmentation should be lesser. And I have seen one more group of people where they, uh, they free the sample after processing it. So they process the semen sample, the processed 0.5 ml or 1 ml, whatever the uh, final uh, 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 things you get, uh, they freeze this sample. They again, for that, they, uh, they will add one is to one or one is to one ratio of media. But what we have observed is when you, when you freeze a raw sample compared to a processed semen sample, a raw sample survivability is quite higher because uh, so far, what we are concentrating is only on the sperm, the cryoprotectin, all this thing. But what we are forgetting is the seminal fluid, which will, which, which is a big science in the seminal fluid. It's not just a fluid where the sperm swims. It is a big science which is there to make sure that the seminal fluid are always support you to the sperm to make sure that they reach to the fallopian tube. So seminal fluid also uh, supports the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the post thaw the seminal fluid will have a easily available enzymes and the protein that can be easily taken up by the sperm rather than a synthetic protein which we are providing in the form of an ATP. An ATP which is naturally available in a semen uh, parameter where the sperms are very, very much used to it, they take up they take up that more faster than the synthetic media. Still, there is a big science where our media uh, or the media's ingredient, me media's uh, uh, what are the constituent are there, it is still a big uh, debate or the data which is go, uh, uh, debate is going on where whether this media which they have is sufficiently used by either the oocyte or the sperm or still uh, it is just like uh, subjected to the sperm or the gamete using. So that's why we have a sequential media or the uh, what do you call it as a, a single step media where this let the gamete choose their own. So there is a big debate still going on on the synthetic media. But when we talk about the natural media, natural media or the natural proteins that are there, which where the sperms are easily, uh, uh, I mean, the sperm can take up those protein very easily. Uh, the, those are the things which are very much important during the uh, post thaw. And post thaw, uh, what I have seen is again there is one more experiment which we have done. Maybe this all be this all this small small experiments might be useful for the beginners who are there. Uh, post thaw, what they do, they take the sample, uh, keep it in room temperature, get it to uh, make make sure that liquefy by itself, then they process it. But again, this is this is not the right way. But what I uh, personally do is take the sample and uh, once it has, once it has come out from the liquid nitrogen, we directly immerse into uh, maybe twenty five to thirty degree uh, water bath, so that the sample liquefied rapidly. Again, when it's slow. Uh, thawing again the crystals can damage the cell so when there is rapid thawing just like how we do for our embryos so this will not form any crystals so that will, the sperms uh, will have a high uh, uh, like good form of DNA in it okay uh, this is what we discussed pre uh, pre uh, pre freeze and post thaw so I will always go for the uh, uh, freezing the sample without uh, processing it. Okay, I don't want to touch on all this thing. Uh, I don't need a damage. Okay. 
So DNA damage, that's what we were discussing so far. Uh, okay, that's a big issue. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the uh, uh, last slide. Now, how effectively you can uh, freeze your uh, seven sample to make sure that you get a optimal DNA integrity. It's not only the cells which we get uh, are post-top, but the cells which you got should have an optimal DNA integrity. So one method which I told is to make sure that you process the sample along with the rough, rough uh, semen fluid, not with the processed one. So uh, when it comes to a future issue, the <clears throat> cryopreservation of human semen is extremely important to the field of male fertility. Nowadays, again, the male ratios are very uh, much increasing, especially post-COVID, we have seen a drastic change in the uh, either the embryo formation or with respect to the, uh, the sperm, which we have seen. Uh, so cryopreservation plays a very important role. Uh, to, uh, today, there is no uh, agreement in the literature uh, on whether or not to cryopreservation uh, cryo effects on sperm chromatin integrity or uh, on the use of unique and functional protocol for the freezing thawing procedure. So though there are not like proper evidence which we uh, which says that this is the right pro protocol where you have to make sure that this will give you the best result. But it is all up to our uh, experience and our own research to make sure that which protocol will remain best with respect to our lab condition. So uh, this is about uh, the uh, topic which I wanted to discuss uh, uh, today. Uh, sorry for the technical uh, issues which uh, we faced initially and uh, I thank for the entire committee for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge which we had and I wish all the best for my fellow uh, speakers. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you Chandan for uh, such nice uh, deliberation. I have one question here which yes. uh, usually um, asked by the clinicians or the sample when the frozen sample is thawed. Uh, in your experience, what uh, one should expect the post thaw recovery in terms of motility and uh, uh, motility of the sperm post thaw? When they thaw sample for ICSI or IVF or maybe for IUI, okay. what they should expect? See, what post, percentage? Post, uh, see, well, when it comes to the clinician point of view, it's like for them, if you have frozen 50 million sperm and it's 80% active, they want the same sperm to be retrieved back. But practically, it is not possible because I'll tell you a simple logic uh, in this. When you mix the sample, say, for example, let it comes to not in million, let it take it in hundreds. So when you have hundred sperm in a semen, when you mix the cryoprotectant in it, you are not making sure that all the hundred sperms are mixed with the cryoprotectant. Mm -hmm. So when you obviously thaw, definitely there, those sperm which are not protected by the cryoprotectant, obviously they'll die. So you, we cannot expect the recovery on it. So when, when we, when as an answerable person, as an embryologist or an androgist to a clinician, it is our responsibility to explain and make them uh, understand the science behind it. It's not like when you freeze hundred, you will get hundred sperms back. So what so is, a, what is, what is cut off? I Means like suppose you are frozen least, uh, with hundred percent motility. So post at how, least how much you should fifty expect? to sixty percent. If you can recover, that's that's your best protocol which you are following. At least fifty to sixty percent. Yeah, I also think so. Minimum fifty sixty percent survival is, should be there. That's true. In a wash in a wash sample, but uh, if we freeze a raw sample, then uh, can we expect some more percentage of motility? Uh, raw sample frozen and thawed. Yeah. Yes, yes. I have seen this. I have seen this. Raw sample, freezing and thawing, their survival and the, uh, the, the count, the survival uh, viability is more higher than the process sample. And the DNA okay. integrity is also more stable in the uh, raw sample. Okay, okay. So, is there sir, I question? I have one question. Sir, I have yeah, one question, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh, yes. Chandan, yeah, just now, uh, just to extend the point. Uh, See, yeah, as far as I know, the spermatozoa are not supposed to be there in the plasma for longer periods, right? Because, no, see, it just acts as a medium for a shorter period of time. Once you, even in my world, so once the deposition is over, once the acidic environment gets over, uh, neutralizes, the sperms just get out of it, right? So, it's always preferably, like, no, uh, maybe the cryo survival rates might be better, but at molecular level, we don't know what exactly is happening. So it's always best to uh, you know, uh, process the sample, get out of the, the plasma, 
fish out all the spermatozoa from the plasma then you freeze it because uh, see that we even naturally also that is that is what is going to happen right okay so what happens here even short period uh, when it comes to I, i'll take it i'll go with your way of thinking in it yes short period is there but even here when we free the sample it is just for a short period we will not expose it for such a long uh, duration so when when the sample is collected obviously we wait for the liquefaction to happen happen but we have we are making sure that the sample is liquefied so that the proteolytic enzyme which is there on the semen sample will will favors the sa- seminal plasma to liquefy so that the energies are free radical and this free di- free radical energy is utilized by the sperm so that's why when we uh, uh, we generally say no don't see the observation of the uh, 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 viscous sample make sure they liquefy so when they liquefy the proteins are available for the sperm so that they will become active so though they have stayed for a certain uh, short uh, period once it cross the uh, vaginal acidic environment mm-hmm. it is it's a matter of short period when we process the semen sample for a freezing we are not leaving the semen sample for longer duration there is something called an half no no period. i was talking about uh, freezing of uh, uh, raw semen sample you mentioned right freezing of yes, raw semen exactly. sample that's where so i'm coming that that's was my I'm point one huh ha so now that for any medium or any cells or any thing in a life uh, in a in a scientific uh, uh, life there is something called an half life period so though the sperms are there in the seminal fluid the seminal fluid will have certain half life period where the the environment will be optimal for the sperm now what happens when we uh, when we free the semen sample obviously we we never wait for long time anyway we take the sample wait for maybe half an hour one hour and freeze the raw sample i agree your question is like why why do you freeze a raw sample so when you freeze a raw sample when you thaw it back again the duration when we when we when we all focus about the timing the duration is very short maybe before thaw maybe one hour we wait and then freeze it post thaw maybe we'll wait for 15 to 20 minutes we'll thaw so the seminal fluid will not cross the half life period before the half life period it makes sure that the na- the natural proteins which are there or the natural atp which are there no, but what happens is but what happens is uh, when you are even at the time of storage also they'll get they'll be in the atmosphere of the plasma right so which actually there is no like 0% activity won't be there matlab some activity will be there right so it is always better to uh, you know remove them and uh, freeze it is what i feel maybe uh, you can extend the no, that's point that's 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 what our uh, all the viewers who are there they're going to uh, do their experiment in their uh, uh, thing in their lab and they may find out uh, in a better way yes uh, yeah, i'll check the action i think one area where uh, probably it's going to help processing is when you are going to have severe oat sample and we will not be uh, say Uh, freezing say where we have less than 0.1 0.01 million cases and in such cases when the volume is more in such cases it would definitely help to process and freeze them because uh, i'm not very sure about the dna damage because as, as i have not done a study for that but definitely the number of sperms which are going to be available post your thaw because limitation of the volume those will be more so when you have severe roots say you have a 2 ml 3 ml sample in those cases processing and freezing would definitely help i agree for that because the count is very less the count is very less the recovery and rates the, will be very good recovery rates are very low and uh, i'm not sure like you had said 50 to 60% uh, as the survival uh, little difference uh, not huge, not huge. Uh, for, for the junior say if you have anything about 30 or 40% you begin with and mm. uh, 50 to 60 probably competency level and there will be a huge difference like mm. some samples just don't survive Uh, in spite of the best uh, protocol what you are having for prior preservation uh, your recovery rates might be less than 10% also and some samples survive just like 90% plus mm-hmm. so mean uh, there was study which said that 30 to 40% is a good survival probably we have not been considering so much in terms of survival percentage uh, because it's a problem of the lot uh, we have lots of sperms available so mm-hmm. i feel the cryo preservation for sperm as such has not been optimized mm-hmm. as well as it is for the oocyte and the embryo hello yeah i think it's uh, this i fully agree with dr akash uh sanket do we have any other question box uh, 
I think no, sir. Uh, there are some questions, but uh, uh, I think it's all overlapping. Um, uh -huh -huh -huh. Okay. So anyway, we are also having uh, running late of time also. So thank you, Dr. Chandan, for uh, your uh, participation. Over to the coordinators for uh, further uh, talk. I also wanted to say something that this discussion was all worth waiting for. So now moving towards the next topic. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yes, Nancy. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Now moving towards the next topic, that is various method of sperm freezing from semen to a single sperm. For that, I would like to call uh, Dr. Akash for moderating the session. Sir is uh, MBBS ASHRAE certified embryologist. He is uh, scientific director of Hedge Fertility Hyderabad. He is an alumni of Osmania Medical College. He is practicing male fertility, fertility and embryology since 2011. He is topper of ASHRAE clinical embryology in 2019 Vienna. He is actively involved in academics and has co-authored a book chapter also. Is active member of many national and international fertility organizations like ASHRAE, ISAR, IFS, and AIS. Participated in many uh, national conferences as a faculty and conduct conducted many multiple workshops in andrology and embryology, including the vitrification and IUI workshop. His keen interest is in male fertility treatment with surgically retrieved sperm. I would like to hand over uh, it to Dr. Akash for the speaker's introduction, please. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Nancy, for the introduction. And uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Harsh Kalra. He's presently working as senior embryologist uh, with, in Australia. And uh, right now, he is associated as a senior embryologist with Apollo Sarita Vihar, New Delhi. His specialization includes genetics, molecular biology, and reproductive sciences. Uh, he has a master's in clinical embryology from Monash and trained in the research and ART techniques from Monash University. He has co-authored papers in journals and books. Uh, welcome, Mr. Harsh. And uh, just before we start the topic, uh, we had some wonderful discussion about how, what are the various media that we are using, what are the effects that we are having of the cryopreservation. Thanks to our earlier speakers, yeah. thanks to Chandan and Asia, and the lovely discussion. And this will amalgamate into what are the various techniques that you are going to apply, whether it's a single sperm or the multiple sperms or the raw semen or processed. So waiting for your lecture, Ethan. Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'll just share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry. So thank you so much for inviting me for this uh, lovely evening. Uh, basically, I'll be discussing more about the various methods for sperm freezing and uh, from semen to a single sperm. Introduction, well, uh, with introduction, sperm freezing really started with freezing of sperm into a snow, but that was something around two years, like 200 years ago. The whole pro approach changed when we had the discovery of glycerol as a cryoprotectant agent by Poulage. Uh, the first human life sperm uh, live birth using cryopreserved sperm was reported in 1953 by Bungie and Sherman. Uh, the longest reported success of storage in this, uh, of sperm is 20, 22 years for human sperm. Uh, the main objectives of this uh, uh, topic will be introduction of sperm uh, freezing, cryoprotective agent, sperm freezing method, advanced sperm freezing methods and devices, and single sperm vitrification. Uh, introduction. Uh, sperm may be uh, stored for uh, patients with limited number of sperms or uh, abnormal semen parameters with abnormal semen par parameters. Patients suffering from illness, patients with ejaculatory problems, and fertility, basically for fertility preservation. Spermatozoa are small cells with a large surface area, making them uh, less susceptible to damage. Pre-freezing uh, semen quality parameters such as sperm motility, abstinence periods, affects the cryopreservation of uh, cryo survival rate of the uh, post-sperm. 
spermatozoa with abnormal motility or particular susceptibility to cryo damage thereby reducing their fertilization ability concentration of cryoprotective agents as well as membrane stability additives is correlated with the rate of sensitivity of spermatozoa to sub zero temperature uh in order to protect cells against uh, damage cryoprotective agents are used we have already discussed in depth about these things uh they are basically of two types permeating uh, cryoprotective agents and non permeating uh, cryoprotective agents uh so i will not go into a discussion about these benefits yes we have they help in maintaining sperm uh, viability improve sperm membrane fluidity increase sperm longevity and survival improves recovery of motile sperm increased ability of sperm to penetrate the cervical mucus post thaw uh these are some of the commercial available medias uh kidzato media queens advantage which are uh, very easily available and widely used sperm cryopreservation methods basically we have uh, three different methods slow freeze rapid freeze and ultra rapid freeze protocols uh for technique to be suitable basically depends on the lab that uh, is using them uh, we'll start with slow freezing well slow freezing was the first method which was widely used for crumb, uh, sperm crab uh, preservation uh, it's basically uh, depends on dehydration so the crab protective agent is added to the sperm and it's been uh, it compromises and it, the temperature is reduced slowly it uh, comprises gradually cooling of cells into two or three steps with within two to four manually or automatically using a pro uh, programmable machine the method uses maximum cooling rate that results in adequate osmotic dehydration to maintain the cell water's chemical potential near an equilibrium uh manual slow freezing the uh, i think this is the most widely used uh, method in the lab where a uh, crab protectin is added to sperm step by step uh, this actually helps in maintaining the osmolarity of, of uh, uh, maintaining the integrity of the sperm uh, sperm sample is gradually cooled from room temperature to uh, to 5 degrees centigrade at a rate of 0.5 to 1 degree uh, centigrade per minute uh, and then finally it's been plunged into liquid nitrogen at minus 196 the other method which is used is programmable freezing which is not widely used because it's expensive the uh, instruments used for it's expensive so it's not widely used but then it is used uh, programmable freezers that uh, use a plate to hold the straws and cooled by liquid nitrogen held in a storage tank under the plate liquid nitrogen is poured into the tank uh, the program machine uses software data to obtain the cooling from 20 to minus 80 Uh, and after completion of freezing the straws are removed and stored into liquid nitrogen rapid cooling this is another method that is now in use uh, in rapid freezing techniques spermatozoa are mixed with cryoprotectives and uh, the suspension is loaded into a cryo straw or cryo vial for 10 minutes above liquid nitrogen so basically it's uh, in the vapor state the temperature in the vapor state something uh, varies from minus 70 to minus 10 so it actually starts dropping not at sudden rate but then it's a uh, lower rate and uh, the island to vapor phase provides a thermal gradient due to the distance of the volume to the liquid and the studies have been done which is comparing the slow and rapid freezing method uh, which says a significantly greater rate of uh, chromatin uh, deterioration is a uh, observed in rapid cooling compared to slow freezing ultra rapid freeze this is another method that has been used and uh, it's been used mostly in sperm freezing for uh, uh, by i think most of the sperm banks uh, this method is used to store human spermatozoa by minimizing uh, crowd protective the sperm cells are cooled in ultra rapid manner which is more like a vitrification method uh the suspension is plunged directly into liquid nitrogen and uh, it's been done in 2012 and the pregnancy was recorded for two healthy babies in that year uh it is believed that kinetic vitrification is more suitable as spermatozoa are separated from seminal plasm before cryopreservation and warm uh, warmed 
for matters who do not need an additional certification step for plasma removal after that. Uh, this is another method which is being used now. Uh, it's uh, more about, it's also known as freeze drying method. Uh, it does not uh, require liquid nitrogen. Freeze dried sperms are kept at uh, 4 degrees centigrade. It's very used, uh, widely used for uh, transporting sperms uh, as it can be done in uh, dry ice as well. Uh, the DNA damage was uh, has decreased compared to the liquid nitrogen, but then uh, most of the sperms are not retrieved in the motile state. Uh, it's uh, and uh, due to which uh, due to the retrieval of the immotile sperms, they it's been mostly used for in the cases with ICSI. Uh, for optimizing the semen cryo preservation, these are two factors we should uh, consider. One is genetic factor which is more about sexual uh, abstinence, seminal fluid quality, and uh, seminal quality. The technical factors mostly include collaboration media, method that has been used, and the cooling rate, uh, storage, thawing, and uh, storage temperature. Single sperm freezing now, uh, single sperm freezing is mostly used for the patients with, uh, such as oath, patients which can't really produce samples, and it was mostly uh, discovered with the uh, first uh, with the use of empty zona pellucida. And since then, a multitude of cryopreservation techniques have been developed to improve sperm count and motility. Uh, conventional freezing methods are uh, not suitable for freezing small number of sper uh, spermatozoa. Uh, sperm samples are diluted in large volume of cryoprotectin, and recovery may get difficult. Uh, to prevent this loss, a small number of spermatozoa are stored in biological or non-biological uh, carriers. Um, micro volume helicots or spermatozoa can be stored and uh, bio carriers such as empty zona parasuda and uh, non-biological -biolog carriers such as cryo loops, micro droplets, uh, mini straws, HSV, all these are in place to use. Uh, biological uh, biological carriers. Zona pellucida was the first carrier developed uh, for low uh, for low number of uh, cryoprotection of spermatozoa. And after the removal of cellular material from embryos to oocytes, so the resulting empty zona can be used for uh, storing sperms. Uh, microspheres were also used, uh, which are made of uh, agar. Uh, the algae which is used is called Volvox uh, globata and uh, it's been used to make uh, these microspheres which are not FDA approved and for the same reason they're not uh, allowed or they're not actually being used widely uh, because the residues of uh, the allergenic acid is present on the sperms and which affects the sperm motility uh, and it's not being researched yet. Uh, these are two carriers, the biological carriers that are being used. One is hollow core agrose capsule, and the other one is uh, Volvox uh, Glabtov uh, sphere. The other method is cryo loop. It's very similar to the one which we use for embryo freezing. Uh, it's been again used for uh, patients where we have a low number of sperm. Uh, the cryo loop consists of a nylon loop uh, that can uh, trap a small number of uh, sperm in the uh, in the loop for, with the help of capillary action and advantages include ease of retrieval minimal sample loss and the drawback is uh, it's an open system and it's uh, it's very easy for to have uh, contamination because of the liquid nitrogen this is another uh, device which has been used for uh, storing low number of samples. It's called uh, cell sleeper vials, and uh, the other method the other method is uh, cryotops. The other device is cryotops. Uh, small number of sperms uh, contained in the micro droplets are stored in, uh, in this dish, uh, and uh, it can be stored in the cryo vial, further which can be stored in the tank. Similarly, cryotop is also being used for uh, uh, storing low number of sperms. Uh, the other method is straws and ICSI pipit. So they are also used for storing sperms. Uh, they are not widely used because, uh, again, uh, 
they do break very quickly and the other method which the other device which has been used is the high security device which was developed in 2012 by desai and his colleagues uh, the reported successful pregnancy uh, using this method is good and uh, the system is closed and does not require interaction with human sperm or animal products microstraw this is another uh, device uh, it's very uh, small and it can be loaded in the same dish as your uh, uh, exit dish and then the sperms can be added into it and then again further it can be stored in a cryo well and into uh, which can be stored into a uh, new tank sperm vd device it's uh, another device that's been used uh, small droplets are made onto the dish and uh, the sperms are stored into that further this dish is loaded into cryo well and that's plunged into liquid nitrogen straight away uh, further this can be stored in the tank uh, in the cryo well uh, these are the various uh, devices which are being used for uh, cryo preserving sperms uh, it involves zona pellucida cryo loop cryo leaf droplets uh, micro straw micro pills all these devices are widely used for uh, low number of sperms Uh, in conclusion, uh, cryo protectants and the method that you're using for uh, freezing sperm is really important. And sperm can be cryo preserved uh, using different methods. It just depends on which is available in your lab. And suitable uh, suitability of cryo preservation technique is dependent on the ability of spermatozoa membrane to withstand the freezing and thawing process. Uh, sperm cryo uh, preservation is an efficient tool in managing. infertility uh, in order to optimize sperm preservation both biological as well as technical factors should be taken in consideration and advanced methods such as using biological or non biological carriers for freezing single to few sperms are aimed at uh, this and have produced a desired result and that's thank you Thank you, Dr. Harsh, uh, for the elaborate presentation on the various methods available. Uh, if I may add one thing, like I think with uh, like you have shown the sleeper uh, is available methods, and your VD devices are there, sperm VD. I think biological they don't have any more role with the availability of this much role to play with sperm VD device available. And uh, that's true. Yeah, and. This, but then uh, again, I would want to add into that the sperm VD device. As far as I know, it's really expensive yeah. uh, to procure, and it's not readily available as well. Like uh, uh, I think so in that's India, another... availability is there quite freely. I guess in India right now, might be two three years back, it was different. I, it was launched two thousand eighteen nineteen that time, and uh, for biological carriers, then if we put, uh, then how is it that would be in terms of uh, you know. putting a sperm inside a zona and recovering that biological carriers are not uh, and, and, yes, they are not and, widely used and, uh, yeah so i think vd would be the a more probable solution more efficient one with recovery yeah. rates they say of 90% 90% plus 92 94% they say and yeah. have you found any difference uh, when there is any sperm freezing when you go in for sperm freezing with respect to a low number of volume of sperms was as uh, when the content motility is normal so for the benefit of our audience can you just elaborate on that any difference uh, i would there? actually want to add into that uh, the sperm uh, survival is solely not dependent on the device that you using it's the technique it's the cryo protecting media that you using it's uh, the technical expertise how you storing it all those factors are resp uh, responsible for a good survival end of the day so just not the device just not the cryo protectant it's everything comes together so yes the survival is good with the device but then again depends on which media you using how you uh, doing the whole process because i think it there is contamination with oil as well how you making right. sure that you taking oil away from that device so all those factors need to be addressed as well at the same time when you actually freezing these forms so it does vary from place to place from uh, person to person that's what yeah. i think yeah. yeah because you know the biggest scare would be when you do a teaser or say yeah. a micro teaser earlier and 
finding the sperm first first of all it would be so difficult and upon that you know you freeze and unfreeze and you know don't know the number of eggs that you are going to get especially if yeah, it's true. a case of priorities uh, i think we don't have any other questions for the questions so we'll be moving forward over to the okay. comments not question but i have a comment yes sir. yes sir so uh, first let me congratulate harsh he has done thank you sir good good job uh, so uh, as far as the availability of the devices are concerned so uh, neither the uh, biological devices are available that easily so yes, in sir. fact those the availability of those things are i think uh, rather more uh, difficult than the availability of these devices so that is one thing another thing is about the lifelization you mentioned it you touched it uh, but uh, in my opinion as far as my knowledge goes i think the um, dna integrity is concerned uh, the dna damage is more or less similar to the uh, technique that we use in liquid nitrogen uh, liquid nitrogen along with that you require a large a lifelizing machine for that which is not very a user friendly thing so for day to day practices lifelization may not be a very feasible thing uh, of course in animal farming they are using it for long time uh, but uh, there are challenges with lifelization so uh, this is uh, just two cents from me what the two cents are for sure to all the speakers and thank you sir and coming to after all the learning now we begin the segment of our visualization for this we have bought three wonderful video demonstration for you all of you and the moderators of the session are vet prakash sir can i have the cv please so is the founder of ahera past president academy as 2020 22 And okay. you just read the yeah, yeah. no need for introduction sir to be honest and <laughs> and rahul sir says so that uh, yeah yeah start start up with the video uh, maybe yeah yes sir so please take over sir rahul yeah, yeah, sir yes thank you thank you uh, nidhi so we will uh, starting our video demonstration uh, so uh, in lectures we have run, learned so many things from our uh, speakers previous speakers uh, from is from uh, sorry cryogenization effect from is from then different uh, media and different devices now it is time for video demonstration so first uh, a speaker uh, is dr hepal kumar shukla he is the chief endologist in nova ivf uh, fertility since uh, 2015 onwards and he has got award uh, in icon of the year endology national et health award member he is member of uh, uh, as uh, academic clinical embryology india visiting faculty gujarat biotechnology research center gandhinagar and uh, he is the team member of ihera authored a chapter in a series of book published in collaboration with tv spain chapter title uh, was semen analysis and semen preparation in fertility management series handbook and uh, work for management of nature conservation united arab emirates uh, emirates in 2009 to 2015 and work for sabarmati ashram goshala managed by national dairy development board bovine semen freezing multiple ovulation and embryo transfer ivf uh, from uh, october 1996 to january 2009 over to dr deepak shukla Dr. Hital, you can start, please. Yes, sir. You can ha huh, start the uh, screen sharing. It's not. Um...
Dr. Hethil, can you uh, uh, start the video uh, because the video is not uh, visible to us. Hello. Yes. Yes. Just a minute. Something happened. I will share it. Sir, is there any issue in uh, playing the video, sharing the screen, sir? Just a minute. Okay, sir. Is it okay now? No, no, we are not able to. Oh, no, you can you can share the screen first, uh, then you start the play uh, for the video. So you have to share your screen. Now? No, no, sir, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. The screen is not screen. shared, sir. Huh? Screen is still you not shared. Share sir, you need to start uh, share screen and then start the video, sir. Screen, start recording. Mm. Sir, I request you to please uh, click on share screen and then click on play button. Yeah, yeah. I am doing that. I don't know why. So when you're opening the share screen, there are two options, share sound and optimize uh, video clip. So just tick on them, sir. And then just share the whole computer, computer screen, laptop screen. Start your video. We can see your screen. Uh, what no, you can I do? Is, this is this is Nidhi's screen. Nidhi Singh is. Uh, Nidhi, you have to stop screen sharing. Okay. So uh, your screen is visible. Yeah. Later, now you can start. Share your screen. Or in between, uh, sir, ah, can we can have, can we can uh, uh, start yeah, with Dr. the Prasad next? Is here. We can start with Dr. Yeah. Prasad. We can have the video, uh, Dr. Munang uh, Guru Prasad. Uh, you have the video with you. Uh, you can unmute yeah, yourself. Hetal, can you share that uh, video to me? From here, I will uh, play that video. Yeah, Dr. Prasad, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. 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 And able to hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Now it's part. Now it's part. Can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah yes, you sir. can go ahead. Uh, Dr. Prasad is going to present a video on testicular sperm preparation for sperm freezing. Yeah, uh, Dr. Prasad, please. Before that, you have to introduce him, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Suman, please uh, share, share the screen. slide. Share yes, sir. 
yeah yes uh, dr prasad he is a doctorate in uh, reproductive physiology uh, hails from tirupati trained in midland fertility services uk working as an embryologist since uh, 28 years uh, from hyderabad and published uh, papers in national and international journals he is associated with the first ivf baby twin uh, of twin states yes dr prasad uh, yes. share this yes so you can share the screens yeah yeah my audible now yes yes sir yeah. yes i i thank the organization era for giving this opportunity as a first time i'm seeing all you people and really i'm happy for the uh, what uh, the ongoing things that you are making the people to know yeah today my topic will be the testicular sperm preparation and freezing yeah many adjustment men maintain sperm production at various varying levels of the testes several surgical methods evolve to collect these sperms the major surgical procedures that we come across is pisa misa tisa tc and micro tc these are the most of the time pisa and misa do not require any mechanical separation of sperms but tisa and tc or micro tc requires mechanical separation of the sperms from testicular tissue this is only just to give an idea the needle puncturing is a tisa and taking out a one small piece is a tc and this is the general uh, everyone knows that using a simple syringe with a negative pressure aspirating the seminus prostribules pull out the whatever is possible and then uh, they squeeze them into pieces and then different ways to how to make it into small pieces and then search for the uh, sperms um sometimes the collagen can help used in cases of difficult samples which helps in degrading the testicular tissue in case of blood stain give it 10 seconds of a quick spin where the rbc can be segmented and soap it can be used for the sperm um, source see uh, in my experience uh, let me tell, show you the procedure what i follow the tissues collected by tisa or tc requires minimum 15 to 20 minutes to process it let me show you first uh, the video and then I explain the things yeah what i usually is take a the a cup like um, the small cap sorry uh, what you see is a round structure is nothing but in a coffee filter where you, you find a stainless mesh in that and then uh, or any stainless steel small piece of a mesh also can uh, serve the purpose and what you need is a two um, uh, petri plates with a medium and one two cc syringe now we can see the seminiferous tubules which are washed in the medium thoroughly and place this uh, seminiferous tubules on the mesh and down you can find one more empty plate petri plate slowly discard the sorry um, place the seminiferous tubules and first immediately try to wet the tissue with the medium so that it won't dry out then take out the piston of the uh, two cc syringe and try to smash the tissue on the mesh slowly gently and then wash the mesh with the medium and the downstream water that is collecting will be having the uh, source of a sperm and again once again you try to smash the tissue 
gently. And wash with the medium. And what are that me that you collect the sample as medium? When you examine it, you can see the sperms. So those sperms are further frozen and then can be used whatever that way that we can. So the whole procedure um, in general, uh, the, uh, the previous video that water I have shown you. Minimum time it takes 15 to 2 minutes, 20 minutes. But the video water, the way that I what I do, it takes just one, two minutes. The most advantage with this way that what I do is uh, mm, same separatist time and stress, same sample exposure time is minimized, reduces the anesthesia time. And what are the sample that we acquire? If they, there are a good number of sperms, we can use a slow freezing. And it's these the sperms are very low, then you use a vitrification method to freeze the sperms. And future life is in tanks now, cryopreservation, hope in a tank now. And this is only to show you the slow and vitrification uh, how it takes. Slow freezing is a drop down temperature and vitrification is a half of a sudden seven into a um, low temperatures. post sperm samples is uh, the, the only one major problem that what we face is most of the time sperms will be immortal. Then it's a question is the vitality. In general, everybody uses this hypospotic solution, pentoxifiline, theophylline, or laser shot. Among all of them, I find the radio medium medias which are available with the theophylline are better, give you a better results. And in case of very, very slow, very uh, low number of one or four, one or sorry, four to five sperms to be frozen, the vitrification device which is shown here is uh, ideal to use it out and at the end i say advanced method should give a chance to every infertile male to become a genetic father thank you thank you dr prasad it was very nice and excellent and uh, i think it is very uh, good method and very simple uh, everybody can uh, use this method uh, yeah. Can we move to uh, first one? You know, I have that I received that uh, you know that presentation from Doctor uh, Ethan. Yeah. I will share my screen. Doctor Prasad, can you please stop sharing? Sir, uh, I do not follow. Uh, you have to you stop uh, sharing your screen. Huh? Stop sharing this. Screen. Stop sharing. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Done. Done. We can have all the video presentations now, and uh, after that, we'll be having the question and answers. Yeah. So please share. Yeah. 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 My work. I don't know why it is. There's an error. There is some problem here. If you can sir, uh, re-download the file and then play this again, or what? Keshav is here. Keshav is here. Yeah. yeah. I think I think we can have uh, the video from Keshav. Uh, no, yeah, it is not running. Actually, there is some problem with this video. Yeah. Uh, can I have the uh, slides for Keshav? Uh,
Mr. Suman, can you please uh, share the slides? Sir, your mic is on, sir. Nidhi, uh, can I have the slide of uh, for Keshav's introduction? Yes, sir. Yeah, please uh, share. Sahiti, please share the file. Sahiti. So is the slide visible, sir? Yes, 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 Nidhi. So, uh, sorry for this glitch. Uh, uh, I think we can have a next video with us. And uh, this video will be presented by Dr. Keshav Malhotra. And he's the very uh, much renowned uh, um, uh, embryologist uh, in India. And he, has, he holds a master degree in clinical embryology from Monash and one of the few ASHRAE certified embryologists from India and he is the lab director of Rainbow IVF and now the director of Malhotra Embryology Training Academy. Keshav, the stage sure. yes, this, yeah. First of all, I want to thank uh, Keshav Malhotra because uh, he, uh, I called him to uh, tell some junior to present the video and he agreed, he told me that I will do sir for that there is no issue. So thank you so much Keshav. For coming thank you thank you thank you sir and uh it's such a pleasure to join all of you here uh is the video visible i've not played it yet but can you is it visible yes we can see yes, yes sir okay perfect so uh, whenever we're uh, doing uh sperm vitrification with sperm vd i think the first thing that you need to uh, really understand is the consumables that you need so basically you would need the vitrification device which is right here you also need a dish now, I am using the sperm VD dish, uh, which is specifically made for sperm VD. It's, this is not available in India as of now. I got it from Eshray, but um, you can use any Petri dish or uh, even a Nixi dish uh, in this scenario. You will need PVP, you will need uh, mops or hippies, and you would also need oil, and you will need a, a Eppendorf pipette as well. Right. Now, the first thing that you need to do is to basically prepare the dish itself. So use any volume that you want. Like I generally make a 10 microliter droplet when I'm uh, doing ICSI. So I, I use the same droplets when I'm use, doing sperm VD. And uh, basically what you would want to do is create about, le let's say, three to six droplets uh, just uh, for the sperm solution. First drop would be for from PVP. So this would help you to just um, stabilize your needle and the aspiration pressure. And, uh, remaining droplets that you create would be of uh, mops or hippies again uh, use whatever volume that you are currently using i generally make a 10 microliter droplet all right you would want to make now if you're using a petri dish you would want to make it in such a way that there is enough space left for the device uh, to be put inside so make it uh, uh, towards uh, like shift it towards the periphery a little bit if you're using this uh, dish, uh, you can actually see that it has a specific allocation for the device. So you would really not worried about uh, where to place the device. You have to cover it adequately with oil. Now this um, is an important step because when you're placing the device into the dish, most of the times what will happen is if you've not covered it properly with oil, especially if you're using a regular uh, ICSI dish, then in those scenarios, the droplets of the device would be 
above oil and that that's not an ideal scenario so you want to cover it adequately with oil and uh, it generally takes about 4 to 5 ml sometimes maybe like 5 and a half ml depending on the size uh, of the dish that much oil you would want to keep now the next step is to basically uh, create the uh, vd droplets so what i do here is uh, you have to create a one is to one dilution of cryoprotectants with uh, hippies and mops so i'm taking uh, i'm taking 10 microliters of hippies i put 10 microliters of uh, glycerol uh, in the same uh, dish mix it well and then you would only want to load 1 microliter or 0.8 to 1 microliter on the device as such you don't really need to flatten the droplets too much um, because a rounder droplet is more stable but that's what you need so what i've done right now is i've mixed the uh, crab protectants with hippies and i will just take a stripper pipette and i will uh, under the microscope i'll just take one microliter and load all three droplets with uh, one microliter each that's uh, pretty much how you would want to prepare the device so if you can uh, look closely just three uh, droplets and once this is done again like i mentioned you don't need to flatten it too much so you can just lift it and insert it into the dish as such so this is how the dish preparation would look like now what what we generally do is that we prepare semen samples first and then in these uh, hippies droplets i i would then load the uh, semen sample but what you can also do is that you uh, directly make the droplets out of the washed semen sample only problem that can happen is that sometimes there's a lot of debris uh, in the washed semen sample because it's a simple wash that you're doing so you might need to dilute it a little bit in order to get a clearer sample i generally wash and uh, then load the sample uh, one one microliter each or one one and a half to two 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 microliters each uh, in each droplet and that's pretty much it all right now once you've done this uh, you straight away move to your uh, micro manipulator and um, all you need to do is identify and find sperms now this is a case where again not many motile sperms were present so just look for sperms try and find them if you if you find them uh, quickly only a suggestion or a tip that has been recommended here is that you basically would want to as soon as you place one sperm into the cryoprotectant droplet, you would want to finish the whole process in about eight minutes. So you don't want more than eight minutes of exposure um, as far as this uh, procedure is concerned. What you can do here is that you can pick up all the sperms, put them in the wash droplet and then pick up all of them together and put it into the uh, cryoprotectant droplet so that you don't uh, have don't uh, increase the exposure time that's pretty much it so we picked up a few sperms uh, and what we'll do is that we will move the dish to the cryoprotectant droplet now what i generally do is that i will leave the sperms or deposit the sperms towards one periphery one of my embryologists or junior embryologists would note down where i've uh, deposited the sperms how many sperms i've put in each droplet so you can see that that's the periphery of the droplet um so we will just bring the uh, needle close to the periphery and then just deposit all of these sperms here. You can see that there are about seven, eight sperms which we found here, uh, which are deposited. That's it. That's how simple the procedure is. Now, once this is done, you would then lift the device out of the dish. And all you need to do is that is to place it in a vial and then just uh, dip it in liquid nitrogen. That's That's it. So generally we identify, uh, we use a cryo vial and uh, you can use barcodes if you're using that in your center or uh, you can also label it uh, as per your protocol. You open the, uh, the device, uh, just take the device out. You don't really need to take out all of the oil from the device. Uh, I, I, um, uh, there was a uh, question on this I think Hush was trying to answer so you don't really need to take out all of the oil from the device because that also acts like a buffer and keeps the droplets stable uh, especially when you're load putting the device on the cryo vial so all the shaking can dislodge the droplets so a little bit of oil is okay and it also is like added protection and then you just dip it into uh, your uh, uh, liquid nitrogen or you can also dip it directly into the cryo can now 
this was the freezing part now let's come to the warming so what you need to do is that once you're warming you uh, take out the vial allow it to settle a little bit maybe like 30 seconds to a minute um, and all you need to do right now is to just notice that the oil uh, that's covering the dish has liquefied completely that's that's pretty much it okay so this this video is a little sped uh, up so don't really worry about the timelines but about 30 seconds to a minute the oil should should basically liquefy and all you need to do is then just place the device into another dish now this dish can be your ICSI dish so you can make it uh, as an ICSI dish um, with your droplets on one side and the device can be on the other side or you can use these special dishes which are there for sperm VD all right so once this is done you just um, immediately dip, dip this device into the uh, dish and I mean you don't have to wait too long because if the droplets are liquefied then you would be able to find sperms uh, in this device as well so pick it up don't wait for too to uh, longer duration go to your micro manipulator again i would generally start from the location that i uh, drop the sperms at um, but because they were motile so they can swim all over the place so you can start with a low magnification and uh, if you can visualize on a lower magnification that's the best uh, scenario but if you can't switch to maybe 20x and you'll be able to uh, find sperms and um, like it was mentioned in the previous talks, the, the recovery rate is decent. I, I would not say it's 90%. I would say it's anywhere between 60 to 80%. And uh, yeah, it's a great, uh, great device for uh, freezing rare spermatozoas. So we are just searching. I also look at the periphery and um, let me see. I can see one right there. And I mean, you'll be able to see these sperms swimming around. Just pick them up and use them for your ICSI. So that is basically how you would uh, use uh, sperm VD and I think everything else, the indications, everything has been covered. This is just a video demonstration of how you use the device. So with this, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, we will take them up uh, maybe later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keshav, uh, uh, for the nice demonstration. And uh, I think uh, I am also impressed with this video. You have showed that last survival rate. <laughs> I, I was always skeptical. I don't know how I will get the survival rate or not. Always it was in my mind. Like in now I can see that survival is very good. Uh, I can use that now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rahul, what, what they had mentioned, sir, if I may interrupt you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, even if the motility is not great, yeah. what uh, the people who have who've made sperm VD in their protocol, it's mentioned that you can still use other uh, things uh, to induce motility like theophylline can be used uh, to induce motility you could also do like a horse test on the same sperm because they are expecting 90% uh, survival with this device i when i do uh, do it i'm expecting 60 to 80% of the sperms to be motile and i mean that is pretty much sufficient uh, when we are doing ICSI. Right. 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 rahul can we move to next video can i ask a question yeah, okay, please, sure. Sir. sure, sir. So, uh, maybe if we are searching in a very um, difficult case and uh, we need to search maybe for half an hour or even longer. Uh, so, this is before we, loading? Yes. So, can we, can we search and pool all these sperms, possible yes. sperms in... in in yes. a droplet with uh, uh, cry protected itself? No. So what 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 generally uh, is mentioned is that you pool all of the sperms in a sperm wash media or hippies. And then ultimately, once you've pooled everything, you're happy with the number of sperms that you're cry preserving, pick all of them up, load it onto the device. The, the only thing that they've mentioned is that as soon as you load it onto the device, the exposure should not be more than eight minutes. That's it. So pooling can be done. I mean, all of these things can be done. They, they've also mentioned that you can do it in PVP, but uh, I generally don't prefer it. Uh, what they've mentioned is that if you loaded it into PVP and then you're picking from PVP and putting it into the uh, cryoprotectant, the ultimate thaw, uh, our post-thaw motility might be a little lesser, but it's still doable. So if you have more numbers, if you want more control, you can also start from PVP. 
Yeah, the only thing is, uh, the concern is because in in uh, your mops or hippies, uh, the spermatozoa tend to become little brittle, and sometimes it's difficult to handle those spermatozoa. Yeah. So for the uh, so the, the the thing is that we have to do it as soon as we load the sample into the device. We have to start immediately, so that we finish the process quickly. The longer you wait, the tougher it becomes. Yes, Sandeep. Sir, yeah. yeah. Uh, Keshav, yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, the thing is, <clears throat> maybe for the juniors, <clears throat> for the juniors, yeah. say, uh, you showed wonderfully how to phrase the motel spermatozoa with VD. But uh, can you share your experience with the motel spermatozoa with VD? And how is it? What are the limitations I've, with that? I've only done one case with the uh, immotile spermatozoa. And um, I mean, that was a case with where even after theophylline, even in a pre-washed sample, uh, there was no motility, but the sperms were viable. So we froze that sample. We used those sperms uh, for ICSI. I had embryos, but they arrested at eight cell. Okay. That's, that's the only uh, experience that I have. In all other cases, let's say you're doing a testicular sperm aspiration and you have immotile sperms, I would recommend that you allow the sample to wait for a little longer so that motility is induced and then freeze the motile sperms uh, from that sample. Okay, thank you. Also, please share your screen. I'll, I'll share the screen just a second. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Freeze uh, semen routinely. And Audible? Yes, sir. It's visible. Yes, yes. Indications and uh, principle of the semen freezing. So, spermatozoa were the first mammalian cells to be cryopreserved successfully in 1949 by Polje, a Swedish scientist. He could make this discovery very serendipitously and his co-workers were working on the cryoprotective effect of glycerol. Till then, so many more advancements have taken place. Rahul says the video is frozen somehow. Yes, yes. The audio is clear, but the video is frozen. Sir. Yeah. I think this video file may be corrupted. So should I try? Yeah, you can try. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, so stop sharing. I'll try sir, this time. Yes, yes. So is the screen visible? Yes, yes, yes visible. The sound is not there. But there is no volume, on Nidhi. I think there is some problem with Nidhi. Nidhi, you can uh, you can do one thing: stop sharing the screen and share the screen only with the video. Or, sir, we can have Dr. Hetal here. He can just give me a second, sir. I'll just do it. Principle of the cement freezing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma so, spermatozoa were the first mammalian cells to be cryopreserved successfully. In 1949, by Polje, a Swedish scientist, he could make this discovery very serendipitously, and his co workers were working on the cryoprotective effect of glycerol. Till then, so many more advancements have taken place. Cryopreservation of spermatozoa is done and stored under liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree centigrade which will be useful for future to attain achieve the parenthood 
the people who faces the challenge of their fertility which is impacted either by chemotherapy or radiation therapy certain people have geographical challenges uh, they have traveling plans and all availability of this sperm on the day of the therapeutic procedure also is a question mark certain times and certain professional commitments may alter the gametogenesis those should exercise the option of semen collection for cryopreservation the other indications like back off of therapeutic usage fertility preservation r&d a uh, donation of spermatozoa also is indicated for this sperm cryopreservation testicular spermatozoa after mesapesatesa which will avoid repeated uh, biopsies or aspirations uh, and uh, male gamete freezing is largely recommended to the to preserve fertility who are exposed to the potentially toxic agents which may interfere with gametogenesis of course many a times uh, pre vasectomy cryopreservation of this spermatozoa is also considered uh, for future uh, usage and let's have a look at how and what happens uh, during the cryopreservation process this is a slow freezing method at and in this so slow freezing method at certain temperature like minus 4 or minus 5 degree centigrade pure crystalline water is formed in the ice masses and this growing ice masses we can say unfrozen fraction is left where the sperm cells and all the solutes are confined now the concentration of all solutes like sugar salts and cryoprotection cryoprotectant increases while the volume of the unfrozen fraction decreases now increase in osmotic strength causes a flux of the water from the cells now slow cooling is needed in order to allow sufficient efflux of water to minimize the chance of intracellular ice formation as cooling progresses the viscosity of the unfrozen fraction ultimately becomes too high for any further crystallization and this is how the remaining unfrozen fraction turns into an amorphous solid that contains no ice crystals hence minimal chilling injury will happen to the cells now cryopreservation is a very slow freezing method for this spermatozoa uh, the crab preservation can be carried out in either 0.5 cc straws or in 2 ml cryo vials the media which is used widely either egg yolk trace buffer or egg yolk free buffer media being used vials or straws must be labeled properly with patient's name either donor's id or clinical history number date of freezing storage location and if it is for fertility preservation we can mention it is for that vapor freezing and programmable freezer can also be used for the crab preservation of the semen now we will have a look on how this pre uh, crab preservation process can be carried out by a video demonstration once the semen sample is collected and required documentation like consents and undertakings are done the routine semen analysis is carried out following complete liquefaction which is ensured by drop by drop free fall and macular chamber can be used for the sperm count and motility and morphology can be carried out by either wet smear or maybe by staining protocol and this routine semen analysis can be helpful 
to control the total motile sperm count per vial which can be uh, uh, at least 50 million motile spermatozoa in 0.5 ml of the volume of being frozen in a vial or a straw this will avoid the overcrowding by uh, dilution against uh, the cryoprotective media so here we are demonstrating the semen freezing by basic wash method uh, basic wash uh, as everybody knows is carried out by simple uh, wash centrifugation and pellet formation where the semen sample is mixed with the culture media and semen sample is transferred into the sterile tube where it is homogenized properly before the centrifugation and the centrifugation is carried out at 600 g force for 10 minutes for the um, pellet formation now uh, here one one important thing which i would like to share with you is uh, semen freezing can also be carried out with prepared semen either by swim up or density gradient method and the density gradient method or swim up method prepared sample will uh, yield more number of motile sperm and immotile fraction will be significantly reduced and that that is how one can achieve better post thaw sperm quantity and quality uh, here the pellet, uh, supernatant of the uh, uh, pellet formation is removed and pellet is resuspended and cryoprotectant media is being added drop by drop very gently and being mixed this should be done over a longer period of at least 1 uh, to 5 minutes so that this uh, hyperosmotic shock from the uh, uh, cryopreservation media can be avoided or minimized uh, because you know the cryopreservation media are having the osmolality of around uh, more than 800 milliosmol per kg now this uh, mixed uh, cryopreservation media mixed with sample will be loaded into the straw and the vial and this vial and the straw should be properly labeled with uh, clinical history number patient's id or donor id and all here you can see this straw is uh, loaded and 480 microliter uh, in a 0.5 cc straw is being loaded you can see the open end of the straw there is a blank space is kept this space keeping is very important before we seal the straw because if this space is not left there then maybe straw will burst uh, because of the expansion of the frozen material and um, it is very important the these uh, loaded vial and the straws are uh, incubated for ther slow thermal equilibrium at Uh, plus 4 degree centigrade in the refrigerator for at least 15 to 30 minutes and then here you can see the setup of the uh, slow freezing vapor freezing in styrofoam box you can see the red lining uh, where till at that level liquid nitrogen has to be maintained and uh, 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 vapor temperature will be around Minus hundred degree centigrade. Uh, the straws and the vials will be kept at the height of six to ten centimeters in the vapor phase. And this uh, at this uh, vapor phase, the temperature is being maintained at around minus hundred degree centigrade temperature. And the, uh, at least for thirty minutes. 
uh, this violent straws will be exposed to the vapor timer can be used for this uh, uh, and to ensure the proper freezing after 30 minutes the liquid uh, the straws uh, and the vial will be plunged into the liquid nitrogen and after that they will be transferred into their final storage location in the cryocan that is pre-decided before the start of the uh, freezing now we have taken out the pre-cooled uh, vial holder and this vial is being uh, kept into this pre-cooled uh, vial holder and it is tightly kept there and placed back into the canister of the cryo can, can and here this is the end of the vial freezing and uh, now the straw will be transferred into the pre-cooled goblets having isotubes of different colors and as decided to their location the straw is being transferred and it is being placed back to the uh, its location into that canister the goblets are uh, two goblets can be a uh, stored here in one canister and uh, roughly 500 and uh, more than 500 straws can be uh, uh, kept the programmable freezers are also uh, available for the cryopreservation procedure this is the programmable freezer at this point liquid nitrogen must be maintained throughout the freezing so this is just a glimpse given for uh, you given to you for how programmable freezer can be used different programs are uh, set there for embryo oocyte and sperm freezing thank you thank you very much Dr. Hitar, I think uh, hello. we can, hello. hello, so if there is any question, we can take uh, the question. Uh, I have one uh, question uh, for Dr. Prasad. Dr. Prasad, uh, Prasad yes, yeah. you have nicely uh, demonstrated us that the mesh method of uh, 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 crushing the seminiferous tubule. Uh, do you think uh, this is a hundred uh, percent means uh, it can mash up uh, or it can produce uh, uh, the granules means it can mash the uh, tubules in a very uh, specific manner or have you used some other methods also uh, uh, to uh, mash the tissue? See, the size of the, you able to hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the size of the pores is not such as fine where the passage of the sperm can damage. They, they're very, I can say this, open up uh, measures. So we, I never find any damage to the sperms or anything. And for the past 20 years, I'm using the same procedure, which saves really a time. And, and, and do you get enough sperm in that uh, for your procedure? Pardon? Do you get enough sperm? Yes, yes, sir. Enough sperm. And what about the remaining the, the, part the of no, the The number of sperm, it all depends upon the quantity, what is present in the tissue. Mm -hmm. It is not relevant to the number of sperm towards this mesh or procedure. Do you preserve that remaining part of tissue also? Pardon, sir? Because you told in your uh, video that uh, uh, after uh, completing the procedure, you mm. uh, freeze the sperms. Yes. Yeah. So what about the remaining part of tissue? Don't you think you have, you have to preserve that also? Or you are uh, left uh, that tissue, discard the tissue? No, no, no. So the total tissue, we we'll use it for the um, squeezing and then uh, separate at the same time and then Whatever the, the medium that is collected out of the wash will be taken into the consideration for freezing or examination. Okay. 
Well, total tissue will be using it. Yeah. Whether it's a TZR or TZ. I'm also having a very odd question to ask. Yeah, every please, every case you use a new coffee filter and then how do you sterilize <laughs> it? <sir? laughs> <laughs> no, no, see, it's, 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 you can use a steam sterilization, that's fine. Uh, or if you want, you can send it for an uh, ETO sterilization, or you get it uh, outside, it's available. Uh, things. Or simple stainless steel mosquito mesh, a piece is good enough. Okay, sir. No need to be such a stainer or anything, but a simple stainless steel piece is good enough. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Like uh, any com, you found any common difficulty? In these procedures, which is not there in your routine uh, ways of you know teasing the sperm out, any common difficulty which you found in these procedures? No, I didn't find any uh, difficulty in freezing the sperm. But the only thing is, I find that this is a simple way to um, isolating the sperm from the tissue. That's all. But uh, once you uh, process it, the whatever it the sample contains the sperms and processing the freezing or anything, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Tissue getting stuck to the pestle or no, something no, like no, that. No, no, no. So then crushing or teasing, have you done those methods also? Or do you think that this is superior according to your experience, sir? See, I don't say that I'm superior or anything. I find this the simple way. <laughs> 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 see, <laughs> see, whatever the way that the intention is to squeeze it, the assembly for us to use. That's only the intention. Whether you do whatever the way, it should be simple. And by this way, the time is minimized. And moreover, uh, the exposure time, you are making it very less. Uh, can I ask one question to Keshav? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Keshav, uh, uh, in the slides, what you presented and what you told, I heard the survival rate as 90%. You said. Did I hear it correct? Like survival. You said recovery of 60 to 80%. Yeah. And, uh, survival of 90%. So, uh, sperm recovery from my personal experience is 60 to 80. Yeah. Uh, in the previous uh, presentation, I also heard it's 90%. I have not. Your literature says. Literature says so. I have not seen ninety percent. I yeah. I would uh, say it's sixty to eighty. Okay. Uh, what I have uh, seen is that uh, this sixty to eighty is the motility that I get after thaw. But I have never tested uh, these sperms with horse. I have not tested them with uh, vitality staining, etc. So I really can't comment on the exact survival. But motile sperm retrieval is around sixty to eighty. Thank you. And thank you to Prasad sir. And I, have I, have one, 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 I have written a paper uh, which says that they used a specialized solution, metrification solution with, with, with VD and they're claiming 96% survival rate. So there are papers, but uh, personal experience, again, again, it varies, right? So yeah. probably... Prasad sir, you can ask your question, sir. Yeah, there's one uh, debate was going, how many wars should be given for a uh, sample. See, I made by studying with a single wash and double wash, and I found the double wash is the best way. And if the sample is used for an XC procedure, it's better to give it a third wash. This for the juniors who are, who are learning is an um, um, information for them. The more the number of washes, it makes the things easy. So in particular third logic wash, for giving a third wash for case. Yeah. Any particular logic behind it, sir? Given it's not the logic. You see, even the traces of uh, cryoprotectant can block the XC needle if you are using the sample for an XC procedures. That's why the more the more number of washes that you give, the, the, the traces also will go off. That's only the intuition. And even for you, we are using for a sample for an IUI, it's better that you are taking out the cryoprotected water in the, in the uh, possible extent. Third wash uh, means uh, how uh, how much time you want to give that wash? Every ten, wash. ten minutes. Sir. See, ten, whatever, minutes, ten, whatever. Ten, ten minutes every time. Pardon, sir? Ten, ten minutes every wash. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, you see, you are, uh, centrifuge in 30 minutes. No, no, listen to me, sir. See, it all depends upon the the count also. So someone, sometimes very low count, it takes more time. Otherwise, five minutes also is good enough. It's a good sample. I don't know uh, uh, at, uh, at the end uh, what you will get because the mobility is already compromised in such sample. So I don't know how much uh, survival rate you will get after that doing these uh, three washes. Uh, little bit, I don't know. But uh, Keshav, do you have any experience like that? 
the, the what I have, I what I have seen if the sample is good count, you can minimize the time. If it is very low count, maybe giving it a benefit of uh, things to come down, whatever the, the, the low count. I've never done more than one watch. Yeah, no. yeah. See, see it's all the, it's all the, it's, it's, it's the, the, the what we call it, you know, practice. Uh, in practice. case of uh, infection, definitely I will go for two watch, like in not more than two, two minute watch. Yeah. Not like that uh, 10 or 10, 10 minute watch. I don't know. Sanket, do you have any, any idea for that, sir? Yeah, sir. I watch only for five to six minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Regularly, uh, just to make sure that uh, remove the cryoprotectants and whatever the yeah, extra yeah, things yeah. which is not needed for the insemination process. So, do you also wash your frozen samples, sir? Like as I said before, uh, doing IUI. Yes, do I, am, I, 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 for IUI also I wash it. Nice. The other senior sir, wait, sir, Akash sir, is this okay? The whole debate was going on in the beginning of the. Uh, I saw that, sir. That's a wonderful <laughs> debate. Dr. Hital, Dr. Hital, are you there? Dr. Hital, are you there? I can say that it's an individual personal experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever that uh, yes. is. It's, it's only the. It's not mandatory or anything. I, I think yes, Chandan had a point on that, sir. I think Chandan had a very good point on that. Uh, maybe uh, nothing offensive to companies who are providing it, but uh, they say just to uh, make the pacify the clinician's job, they say that directly you can use it. Once yes. you talk, uh, allow it for some time and you can use it because that is very pacifying for them instead of going for preparation. I so, but uh, if you are, if embryology is there in the lab, then definitely you have to wash it. Yes. I think uh, the place where I usually give a second wash is. Uh, once you give a first wash, it's one wash for me as well, around five minutes time. Mm. And uh, when you add it to the PVP, sometimes you see coagulation, probably some carrier of your cryoprotectant uh, over there, or when you have frozen a raw semen sample, probably the proteins or they couldn't have been washed off clearly. So in these cases, I've seen that when you give a second wash and take out the supernatant properly, and many of the times that coagulation disappears and the motility right. will be better in the PVP. Right. Right. Nikhil, do you want to comment on this? We are uh, using uh, 1200 RPM post for post thaw washing uh, just for four minutes. And for frozen IUI is also with my own experience, I can say I have performed. Your voice is not. Uh... Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so with uh, 1200 RPM wash with four minutes post oh, uh, we have uh, means for IUI with uh, patients semen, out of six, three pregnancies have been established successfully. And so, I mean, only one wash, milder wash is more than enough. Uh, that's what my experience is. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think uh, there are no more questions for the day now. <laughs> Dr. Shukla ji here? No, Shukla sir is not here. So uh, now we can close. You can, you can proceed with the vote of thanks. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, thanks to our all faculty, our convener, co-convener, founders, co-founders, founders, co -founders, founders so many more, anyways. <laughs> so, founders, uh, uh, so, and thanks to everyone, all the delegates, and uh, thanks to Seed Pharma for uh, supporting us. And uh, this is the one announcement. Uh, we are again coming uh, for third virtual in, uh, embark on. 12th and 13th November, and uh, the theme is IVF consensus to adapt or to perish. And uh, there will be uh, many experts from national and international around 70. I will just check with the uh, message uh, messages that I'm done this. So if uh, something is there, we will. So uh, with this, I invite all of you, and that uh, registration will be free. And thanks to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you, Stephen. Are we offline now? No, I don't think we are offline. Still live on YouTube. Forty participants are still. It's offline now. Still live on YouTube.